Okay. <clears throat> so this being uh, dedicated to Shabbat, want everybody, uh, everybody is muted already. Uh, can you hear me when I sing? Yai, dai, 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 dai. Can you hear that? Can you hear the guitar as well? Laura? I can't hear you, Laura. And you're not muted and I can't hear you. My mic was muted. There you go. Um, when you have guitar and voice, I mean, yeah. I found this in a lot of my classes. They both kind of come in and out a little bit. Oh, okay. But, you know, we can hear it. All right, good. Yeah. Maya Fehayom Shabbat Shalom Maya Fehayom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Nice to see you. Bye. What day is it? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked that question, Scott, because I'm, I want to share with you a story. Ah, you know, Kelev, like your heart. I want to share a story with you. Um, it is about just that. It is about, uh, I call it Shabbat on Wednesday. <clears throat> and I'll put the link, because uh, I have it on my blog. I'll put the link on my blog uh, if you want to go back there and see the resources that I use for today. So this story is about two Hasidic masters, Reb Zushia and Reb Elimelech, and they're the best of friends, and they're chavruta, they're study partners, and they get really, really deeply into their study. And, you know, when they study, it's L'Shem HaShemayim, it's the sake of heaven, and they get lost sometimes in, in, in Atzilut, you know, in closest to God as you can get. And one day, while they were... Um, they were beginning to part from each other and still maintaining that feeling of, well, I'm going to call it Shabbos. Um, Rebbe Elimelech said to Rebbe Zushia, brother, I'm afraid that my feeling of holiness on Shabbat may not be a true feeling because I'm feeling it right now. I'm feeling it right now after studying here together with you. And Rebbe Zushia said, you know, I was thinking the very, very same thing. Well, what should we do about it? And Reb Zusha replied the following. All right, let's do this. Let's choose a day, a weekday, and do the exact same things that we would do for Shabbat. We'll prepare a meal. We'll invite some other Hasidim come to join us, and we'll teach some words of Torah, and we'll sing, and we'll study. And if it happens on that day in midweek, that we still have that same feeling of Shabbat, that same feeling of holiness, we'll know that our way is not the true way. But if we don't feel anything special, we know that our way of observing Shabbat is correct. So that's exactly what they did. They prepared dinner. They put on their Shabbos clothes. They put on their strimals that they only wear, you know, wore on Shabbat. They ate with their chasidim. They spoke words of Torah. They sang. They danced. And sure enough, you know what happened. The feeling of holiness overcame them, just as it did on Shabbos. And so when they were alone together, Rabbi Yelimelech said, concerned, brother, what should we do? They were both in a state of emotional crisis and spiritual crisis. So he said, let's go to the great Rabbi of Mezrich, you know, the Magid of Mezrich. Let's ask him. And so that's what they did. They went to their Rebbe. And they told him their dilemma, and this is what he said to them. If you put on Shabbos clothes and Shabbos hats and speak words of Torah and share a meal and a song with all your chasidim, of course you're going to have a feeling of Shabbat holiness because all of those things have the power to draw the light of Shabbat down to earth. 
you have no fears. Your observance of Shabbat is right. And so is what you just did, my friends. So, we have nothing to fear tonight if we draw a little bit of a light on Shabbos down here with us. So my question, to open it up for a moment or two, <clears throat> is what are some things that you do to draw the light of Shabbat into this world on a weekday? Not a rhetorical question. I log on to Zoom to study with you and the lovely people. Oh, <laughs> and he didn't pay me to say that. <laughs> well, studying for sure. I mean, I get that too, and also spending time with friends and connecting, right, Mary? I think for me, it's stopping whatever frenetic stuff I'm doing and taking a few minutes just to look outside hmm. and notice that it's not all focused on my computer screen. Yeah. Thank you. So in that way, I guess Shabbos is an attitude. Shabbos is a recognition of what's here right now in front of us. It's accessible all the time. And I'm going to speak to that a little bit more uh, in a bit. Anybody else want to share something? Hi, Judy. Welcome. Laughing. Laughing. Absolutely. You know, Yivdu et Hashem Basimcha, there's a reason why uh, the psalmist wrote that, because laughter, Simcha, it opens us up into Moachin de Gadlud, into spaciousness, expansiveness, into less an egoic place and more of opportunity to let God in. So let's look for a second, unless anybody else has something to share. Um, I want to share my screen with you. <clears throat> Let's look at the word Shabbat. Okay, everybody see it? All right, I've got to move you up there. So Shabbat means, the word itself means to rest or desist. There is a little tzimtzum, a little drawing back from the, 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 our weekday rituals. That's part of Shabbat. Now, Shabbat shares the Shoresh with Shevet. This is, of course, uh, um, elementary to, to some of you, but I want to make sure we're all on the same page. La Shevet, to sit, right? Which we do a lot of on Shabbat. We sit in shul, we sit at home, we sit and study, we sit and meditate, we lie down, <laughs> take a shluff. And then I have three other uh, words up here. Um, shav right? So Shav is to return, right? Or Teshuva, right? Teshuva, to return to, to return to a state of purity, a state of holiness. So within this also is uh, embedded this idea of return is what we do on Shabbat. And of course, the great returning is during Yamim Noraim, the high holidays. Yeshiva, you see Shav, which comes from Shabbat in yeshiva. People sit on the tuchuses in the yeshiva and they study all day. And then yeshuv, yeshuv, does anybody know what yeshuv is? Settlement. Yeah, so yeshuv is a settlement. So Sharon, welcome. Um, did you bring enough for everybody to eat? No, okay. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a settlement. So there is a settling that goes on during Shabbat at all, uh, as well. Perhaps in the same way we might look at, you know, the snow globe. I don't know if anybody, ha if you have one in your house, but you know, as we love snow globes as kids. You shake, shake, shake them up, and then you just watched in amazement and awe of the little, you know, pieces of snow settling, right? So the, the idea of settlement also has that feeling of Shabbat, of settling in, right? So Rib Zalman, a blessed memory. He has uh, this wonderful book that many of you read, Jewish with Feeling, right? So I'm going to borrow some from that tonight. And I'm going to borrow some beautiful writings from Hadar tonight as well. Um, <clears throat> Rab Zalman teaches this. You want more Jewish in your life? Start with Shabbos. Now, I am, um, I am 
uh, on purpose, I'm saying Shabbos instead of Shabbat, because Reb Zalman would say that Shabbos is warm and fuzzy. Shabbat is, has hard edges to it. <laughs> you know, the, the, the Ashkenazic, you know, Shabbos, you know, it's like, it's, he goes, Shabbat Shalom. And then my granddaughter says it beautifully, Shabbat Shalom. But if we say good Shabbos, it has kind of like, for those of us who, um, who grew up Jewish, it has smells attached to it. For those of us who came to this and we chose, as we chose Judaism to be our course, still there are smells and their memories and their feelings about both Shabbos and Shabbat. But Reb Zalman um, liked, uh, liked Shabbat. No, it's like Shabbos. I'll think of Shabbos, the first letter, Shin. For those of you who've been to Eilat Chaim, you know, when there are times, uh, I think even Kala has this sometimes, but the times you want not to be um, uh, relational and you just want your, to your own space, they give out this little, you know, uh, what's it called? Um, things that hook onto your shirt, you know, uh, buttons with a Shin on it, which means for Sheket. All right, so Shabbat starts with that shh, the idea of quieting, quieting the mind, quieting our regular activities, right? That leads us into a looking for the right balance between resting and working and resting and working and finding a, a, a rhythm of living divinely. So peeking back at last week's Parsha, right? Vayakhev. So think about this. The same time that Moshe is instructing about the tabernacle, all this work is going on. In the, in the middle of all of this, these instructions, Moshe, God says to Moshe to tell the people, for six days work may be done, but the seventh day shall be holy, a day of complete rest to God. Right? So w embedded within the idea of work, 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 work all the time is the necessity and and we need reminders. You know, some people tell me that they have apps now that go off every once in a while to remind, a little bell to remind them uh, to give gratitude, right? Or just stop and be for a moment. So this Shabbos during the week in that way. So it's, it's a nice way to use technology to do that. But I want to come back to this idea of stopping after a period of time of of being in the world and doing, because that's yoga practice. And I noted this during uh, Mindful Motion Shabbat, that each series of poses, right, and you do yoga, is followed by a resting pose to integrate fully and receive the benefits of the preceding postures. So the same is true when we are davening Kabbalah Shabbat, for instance, those six psalms leading up to L'chad Odi, when we was welcome, but we chala, but we chala, right, is to leave behind, integrate, and to be ready for it, ready to receive L'chad Odi, L'chad Shabbat. So also, I think yoga is a wonderful, wonderful uh, metaphor here. Because each series of poses followed by a resting pose. Um, does anybody know what the resting pose in Hatha Yoga is called? The core pose? It's called Shabasana. All right. I like this. A nice play on words. And I, I didn't make that up because a bunch of synagogues are now using that as, you know, like a Shabbos morning practice of meditation. They call it Shabasana. But the, so we do the corpse pro, pro pose or the resting pose to fully receive the benefits of the preceding postures in yoga, right? And you know what Shabbasana means in, in yoga traditions? It means to sit still. <laughs> it means to sit still. It means Shabbat, right? It means to sit. So again, Reb Zalman points out that on Shabbat, we rest content with what we have. Um, as I, I learned from, I don't, and I don't know where he got it from, my, my friend and colleague, Rabbi Sonny Schnitzer, years ago, Shabbat is a day of human being, while well, the rest of the week is a time for human doing, right? <clears throat> Giving up the idea of the mastery of the work that we do over our space. Heschel, Reb Heschel points out that there was a process that led 
up to this, even given the um, all of the the rules and regulations um, uh, in in the Torah, in all of the halakhic literature, because what was the evolve? How did it evolve? First, we had a temple in space. We brought our sacrifices. This was our davening, right? This was our way of divining, of becoming in alignment with the divine, right? And, but that was destroyed. And then we built another one, and that was destroyed. And on then during that next time, what the rabbis and their genius did, the the the, the whole underlying structure changed to a temple in space, to a temple in time. I'm sure you've heard. Uh, uh, Heschel's quote of Shabbat being an oasis in time. All right. So I want to go to um, <clears throat> another. Uh, anybody have any comments? Something that you want to uh, want to add while I'm pulling up um, the, the next handout, so to speak. Rabbi Mark, it's Amy. I just yeah. want to say hi. Hi, Amy. Welcome. Hi. I'm doing audio. Okay. Great. Alrighty. So um, Friday night. Okay, Friday night, we start in remembrance of two things with Vayachulu Hashemayim. One, of course, is the remembrance of creation, and the other is a remembrance of the Siat Mitzrayim, which is in all of our prayers strewn throughout the entire week. So we're going to look at a couple of, um, well, for, for now, actually, just... This, um, which appears, of course, in Breshit, and the, the translations are from um, Alter, Robert Alter. Then the heavens and the earth were completed and all their array. By the way, just um, uh, Reb Zalman, uh, you know, God is sometimes referred to as Adonai Tzavaot in our prayers. And as uh, in contrast to God, the Lord of hosts, which whatever the heck that means, <laughs> Reb Zaman used to like to say the God of diversity, because you think of tseva, tsevaot, all the colors of the rainbow. And remember too, Reb Zaman was the first, he created the rainbow talus um, at Camp Ramah with his, uh, with his campers. And God completed on the seventh day the task that he had done, and he seized on the seventh day from all the tasks he had done. So notice in my translations, I'm um, giving a little chip chip uh, to he, because that's not my theology. And yet, uh, Alter decided to, to use that as, as opposed to referring back to God. And this was Reb Zalman's uh, invention, I believe. God with an exclamation point in the middle. So I'm using that as well. Notice again, Vayishbot Bayom Hashvi'i, to seize. There's Shabbat right there, right? And we're going to find it one more time in uh, the third pasuk. And God blessed the seventh day and, and hallowed it and made it holy. Because on that day of rest, right, God had seized from all the work, from all of God's work. So there again, we have, we have Bayishbot, we have Shabbat. Uh, references to the day, although it doesn't call the day Shabbat, does it? That doesn't come till later. It doesn't come till later in the, um, in the late in the book of um, Shmot, where from last from last week, where um, uh, where it says the exact it's, it says that we shall refrain from from working. Alrighty, so lechad odi. Speaking of lechad odi. I'm pulling up another, uh, where did I put it? I know it's here somewhere. I had put it in order. Oh, no. Okay, you'll have to take my word. I think I must have closed it. Uh, okay, I don't have it on my desktop. I thought I did. What's the first verse of L'chadodi? Shamor v'zachor, right? Shamor v'zachor. So we have in the book of Devarim and Deuteronomy, Shamor, Shamor at Yom HaShabbat, 
Likud Show. To what's a good uh, translation of Shamor? Anyone? Guard. Guard, right? Like a Shomer is a guard. Shamor to guard Shabbat. Right, and keep it holy. And then in uh, turning back in the book of Shemot in Exodus, Zechor et Yom HaShabbat Lekod Show. To remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, right? Any of you know what the rabbinic unpacking of that is? Why we have in one book, one, um, uh, one instruction, which is Shamor, at Yom HaShabbat L'Kod Show, and the other one, Zachor, at Yom HaShabbat L'Kod Show. It's a sweet explanation. Anybody? Okay, this is great. It's so great that the writer of L'Kod Odi, he, he tells you right there, Shamor V'Zachor B'Dibor Echad, which means what? God said both at the same time. Yeah. The Dibor, right? Said at once. And we'll find that in, um, in the Talmud Bavli, in, uh, in the Masech Shavuot. I'll read it to you. That Shamor and Zachor were pronounced in a single utterance. Right? A single or utterance. Now, you might say, ah, come on. <laughs> But you ever heard of, um, oh, I just, it's tone singing, or I think it's called, that you can actually sing two notes at the same time? Well, if human beings could do that, <laughs> then God could certainly say two words at the same time. Another explanation could be, hi, Devor, nice to see you. Um, another explanation could be that, you know, we're just human beings. There is a stimulus. Uh, let's say we all go to the movies together. We're going to hear like or see 10 different things because we're 10 different people. So maybe some people heard one thing and some people heard the other things. All right. Now, Reb Salman goes on to talk about the difference between Shamor at Yom HaShabbat and Zachor at Yom HaShabbat, to guard it and to honor it. So he says, I'm going to quote, because of the human inclination to make distinctions, some people heard the word guard, the no-no's. He's going to say, the do nots. And some people heard the word zachor, the yeses. In order to both messages to get through, Torah gives us both. All right. So Reb Zalman's giving us, based upon, of course, the, um, <clears throat> uh, the idea of shamor v'zachor b'dibor echad, um, the necessity for us to have both in order to have a balanced way of Shabbat. Because if we don't... Okay, a little story. Um, my brother, years and years ago, before I even met anybody from the Jewish renewal world, he took me to Brooklyn to 660 to, uh, to daven at the, uh, the shul of the Lubavitch Rebbe. And we stayed with the, uh, the, the, in, the, in uh, the apartment of a rabbi. Now, everybody in, in Crown Heights is a rabbi, so that could be anybody. But um, I saw something there, things there that I'd never seen before. Um, first of all, I saw in the bathroom pre-torn toilet paper. And I see, Judy, you're not, a lot of you are nodding your head. Now, I know that if that had been my introduction to Judaism, um, I might not have, <laughs> I, I, I might have run away, you know, in the other direction screaming, because certainly that's a no, right? That is a very, very tight uh, uh, gvul, a barrier around the Torah. And, you know, my modern mind, I didn't grow up with that. And I probably would not have uh, reacted very well to try to be um, uh, introduced to that. At the same weekend, I, um, I learned the, uh, the term muktza. Raise your hand if you ever heard the term muktza. Okay, Scott, what's muktza? Um, it it's things that you're not supposed to use on Shabbat. Yeah, not only don't use it. They're perfectly innocent, and you don't violate Shabbat by using them, I guess. I don't thoroughly understand it. Yeah, so it's one of those categories of, of, of making a fence within the fence, which is what happened 
from the time of the emancipation, you know, the, uh, the, the Jewish emancipation, when we started going in all different directions, and, you know, there was no word for Orthodox Jews. We were just all Yidden. But what happened in response to the freedom that some Jews were taken, some uh, sections of the Jewish community, they circled the wagons, all right? They circled the wagons and made the circle tighter and tighter and tighter until only, depending upon who your Rebbe, that was your circle, all right? So the muksa was a category of things that you shouldn't even, you shouldn't even touch for, because you might use it, all right? Don't even touch it because you might use it. So a quick story, and I want to be mindful of time, and you can see why a conversation, a discussion about Shabbat is going to go on for many, many weeks. And we're, going to, we're shooting towards the mystical uh, um, ideas behind Shabbat with several weeks down the road. But something else that happened at that rabbi's table, which was on um, Friday night before everybody, uh, I was sitting at the table, they, they hadn't sat down for dinner yet. Oh, we'd come back from shul. That's a whole different story with the Rebbe, with the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Um, we, I was sitting at the table, and I just and I know the beautiful silver, everything, you know, candlesticks and matchbook covers, and I just picked up the matchbook cover to uh, to look at by by um, and and I and I put it down. Well, the next day, um, I told I I was. Um, telling the rabbi and his wife how beautiful everything was and thanking them for staying and that the matchbook cover, um, even the matchbook cover that I, that I picked up to look at. And this wife said, oh, I was wondering who moved it. Now, if I moved that matchbook box like a few centimeters, <laughs> it would have been a lot. But see, this was her spiritual practice. And I'm not looking askance at it. I'm actually looking at it in awe and wonder that she is so on top of, of her household that she knows every little nick and cranny of what's going on. Um, so what I didn't cover tonight that we'll pick up next time, because I want to end with a song, um, is uh, the models for Shamor V'Zachor. Um, and... Um, Next week, uh, Rabbi Deb Kalani will be here, and then I'll pick up. Not the following week, we won't be here meeting in the mosh pit, because the next Wednesday, that next Wednesday night is Purim, okay? Um, and one of the things I want to also eventually get to is um, <clears throat> my discovery um, of a, an amazing organization in the Warsaw ghetto called Oneg Shabbat, whose role it was, and there's an amazing movie about it now, and um, I hope to, when it's available, to buy the movie and host a, a, um, a viewing of it here, um, of people who recognize what was going on, including the fact that the Nazis were were the ones who were telling their side of the story and that they wanted to make sure what was documented, what, what was going on in the ghetto from, through Jewish lens. So it's an amazing story of documents that were saved and buried and dug up after the war in, in the Warsaw ghetto where everything had been totally destroyed and leveled. And the finding of it is absolutely fabulous. So I want to end with a poem from Wendell Berry. You might be familiar with it, as well as a song. <clears throat> the song is light and airy and cheery, um, which came to me one day as Renee and I were driving to Congregation Olam Tikva in Fairfax some 25 years or 30 years ago, we had a long drive there to lead services on Friday night, and this song came to me. So um, if you'd like the song <laughs> to use, it's great for family services. First, Wendell Berry. When despair for the world grows in me. When despair for the world grows in me and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be. I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things 
who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day-blind stars waiting with their light, and for a time I rest in the grace of the world, and I'm free. I'm the happy rabbi and I'll sing you a song. Yai, dai, 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 dai. I'll sing it to you and then you sing along. Yai, dai, 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 dai. After me now. Yai, dai, yai, dai, yai, dai, dai, yai, dai. Yai dai, yai dai, dai da dai, yai dai, yai dai, yai dai dai, yai da dai da dai da dai da dai da dai. Now every Friday night we kindle the flame. Yai dai, dai dai dai. And next Shabbat we're gonna do it again. Yai dai, dai dai dai. Lahad Bigner Shabbat. Yai dai. Yai dai, yai dai dai, yai dai, yai dai, yai dai dai da dai, yai dai, yai dai, yai dai dai, yai da dai da dai da dai da dai da dai. I like to sing that part like a muppet. Yai da dai da dai da dai da dai da dai. Now every Friday night we taste a sip of the wine. Yai dai 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 dai. Oh, it tastes so good. It's the fruit of the. Right, yai dai, yai dai dai. We say the kiddush and yai dai, yai dai, yai dai dai, yai dai, yai dai, yai dai dai da dai, yai dai, yai dai, yai dai dai, yai da dai da dai da dai da dai da dai. One more verse. Now every Friday night we taste the sweet braided bread. Yai dai 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 dai. Oh, it smells so good it goes right to my. You know the song. Yai dai 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 dai. That's the mozi. Yai dai. Yai dai dai. Yai dai. Yai dai. Yai dai dai da dai. Yai dai. Yai dai. Yai dai dai. Yai da dai da dai da dai da dai da dai. Oh, yai dai, yai dai, yai dai dai, yai dai, yai dai, yai dai dai da dai. Yai dai, yai dai, yai dai dai. Everybody, give me the Muppet thing across your screen. Yai da dai da dai da dai da dai da dai. <laughs> the Mr. Rogers of Shabbat. Excellent. <laughs> That's animal. <laughs> <laughs>